we're live now, it said. We're live. We're it says, live. It says you're now live. Actually. We are now live. We weren't live, but now we are live. We are live today on Crucible TV. Twelve thirty every Friday. You know exactly where to find us. Right here, Corey see, Doll. See Doll already on. Already on. She knew. She was waiting. She was waiting. Net, what's happening? How's the noggin doing? You feeling good? Casey popping on. Laxter's popping on. Mm -hmm. Alan, everybody's popping on. Mr. Kaylee, Yates, Drew man, Yates, everybody in the house. Pop. Man, look on. at this. We're and I love it. Crowd How we doing, Mandy? What's happening, man? Big look, crowd. All you guys. All you guys have just been waiting. You all been like, it, when is it 1230? When is it 1230? We got a day off of school. When is it 1230? I'm trying to get online and get my mind right. I'm glad everybody turned their clocks back. I'm glad everybody. You know what? I tell you, I bet now, now that I use my phone for my alarm, I would never even know the difference. Like, <laughs> I really wouldn't. You know, I did. Up, up, I just get up earlier, and man, it looks like it's getting kind of dark out early. I wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. Good, I'm glad you're feeling good. Football, Laxter, I like that. Anders mm -hmm. popping on. We have uh, semifinals. That's what? what I'm talking about. What? <laughs> Teleworking today. Nice. That's semifinals. Pep talk to get our week going in the right direction. I, I like love that. it. We need to pop on for this pep talk. Heck yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Mike, what's happening, baby? How are we doing? How's G Money doing? So today. We're talking, we're talking getting our minds right. Mm -hmm, okay? let's go. We're talking getting our minds right. And we're talking maybe to some coaches today. Maybe we're talking to some parents today. Maybe we're talking uh, to the athletes today, having this different mindset. But, you know, if I'm, if I'm really being honest, this might be a little uncomfortable for somebody, right? This might be a little bit of an uncomfortable talk for some of you parents out there, right? It might get a little bit like, ooh, I need to make some changes in my life. Might get the gut punch a little yeah. bit. Might get that little, like, heavy feeling in the gut. But that's okay. That's when we grow. That's when we get better. That's when we grow. When we start being challenged, when we start feeling like, oh, man, that's a little nudge, that's when we need to really like lean in and listen, start writing some of these down, maybe uh, share this with somebody that you think, man, maybe this will make a big impact in their life. So today, Miles, I see you hopping mm -hmm. on. Now, Casey, maybe we'll, uh, we'll do a little split, split screen here at, at the end. As soon as we're all finished up, maybe we'll bring some of you guys on uh, IG here. So, man, I don't know. Might be kind of crazy. So we just got three things. We're talking about the long-term fix for the quick fix culture. Mm -hmm. Long-term fix for the quick fix culture. Parents, you guys probably see this. Athletes, some of you guys are probably like so into it, you don't even realize that it's happening. But parents, I know so many of you guys, we hear, uh, have so many of our parents come in and say like, man, my, my kid, they, they just want it right now. They don't understand the process. So they don't understand like the long-term uh, goals or they don't understand, you know, what, what it means to work for something, right? So how do we fix that? How do we get out of this quick fix mindset? Sometimes uh, people call it the microwave yes. mindset, I right? To, I was getting ready to but, drop oh, that. Go ahead, go down. ahead and say it. Go no, ahead and say it. I was it. getting ready to say the microwave culture. Oh, the microwave culture, right? Everybody there. wants to just nuke it and zap it. Two minutes. And it's done. And it's done, right? The Pop-Tart. Pop-Tart, uh, I don't know. I was, I was going <laughs> to sum up. Toaster pop strudel. That's what the, you're trying the, to The think toaster of. strudel. Toaster strudel. Toaster strudel. Gorilla Mike. Time. Toaster strudel time. Gorilla Mike, what's happening? He's baby? on, baby. But we do. We see that all the time, whether it be uh, finances, whether it's, um, you know, grades, whether it be making a sports team, whether it be uh, getting stronger in the weight room or developing a new pitch or whatever it is, people are just wanting it now, now, now. Mm -hmm. Because we arguably have more information, access to information, than ever before, just like right here on our, our, on our phones, right? How many of you guys are sitting here watching this on a phone right now? We have access. Probably almost everybody. Yeah, to th th so much information. And so if we need to know something, if we want to learn something, we can just pop it up. So when that doesn't happen, we get frustrated. Parents, we get, we get frustrated when our kids don't understand this. But I think so much of this, we have to, we have to change the way we go about doing this, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the first things I think we need to do to combat this quick fix culture, the long-term fix, the long-term fix for that quick fix culture is have and help develop with your kids a long-term vision. Yes. Help develop this long-term vision. Help them see into the future. Help them to, to look into the future and say, this is the long-term process, long-term process. You know, who do you want to be, not like next week, who do you want to be in 20 years? Right? Who do you want? It maybe you're a middle schooler. Who do you want to be uh, by the end of high school or in college or maybe post college? Right? 
who is that person you mm -hmm. want to be? Whether it's how you're acting, uh, maybe it's you're playing a sport, maybe it, who knows what it is, right? But start setting the tone early on that this is a long term process. Like, how does that work with the baseball guys? Like, when you're when you're talking about coming up, developing a swing. Like, how many guys just want that quick drill? A lot of them. Yeah, the quick drill to fix things, right? And I, you know, not just like baseball specifically, but. I think it has a lot to do with just parents and the athlete being on the same page. Mm -hmm. Because if the athlete, sometimes parents too, you guys have to take a step back. Maybe, maybe your kid has the right mindset, but you're mm -hmm. forcing them back into that short-term thinking rather than the long-term thinking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, so sometimes if the kids, it's not always, they're not always wrong with their mindset. Yeah. Sometimes the parents can can drag them back down into that funnel yep. of why did you go for six this weekend? Yeah. We pay all this money for training. You know, mm -hmm. why did you go for six? It's yeah. like, that's going to happen. Yeah, that's going to happen. I, I had a guy last week and he had, he's actually coming in today. He had probably one of his worst sessions ever mm -hmm. last Friday. And he's been training, hitting for like two years. Mm -hmm. And he was like, he just wasn't there today. Sure. And, and that's going to happen. And, and the biggest thing we can teach an athlete at that point is it's fine. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not the end of the world. You're going to go out there some days and just not have it. Yeah. You're not going to feel it every day. Right. So, and, and that, that's where it can get tough as a parent because immediately you can look at them and say, what the heck happened? Like, sure. you need to focus. You need to do this. You yeah. need to do this. It's just an off day. Yeah, and I think to, to piggyback onto that, I think so much of this long-term development, this is all started when they were like little, little kids. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to challenge you to start living your life, parents. I'm going to start challenging you to, you to live your life as if you've got a surveillance camera on mm. you at all times. <laughs> at all times. Because guess where so many of your kids are learning the behaviors that they're learning? From you from watching you, from watching you. And this is where it gets a little uncomfortable maybe, right? This is where it gets a little uncomfortable. We want our kids to do something different maybe than what we're actually doing, right? So if we want them to have this long-term vision and say, hey, it's a process, mm -hmm. we need to enjoy the process, we need to cherish the challenge, we need to do all these things. Parents, we need to model that first. We need to model that first for our kids. That's where it starts. It's the best thing ever is the fact that you have the most influence on them from the time they were born all the way through. Yes, culture is out there. Yes, school is out there and teachers, but you have the opportunity to be the biggest, single biggest influence on your kids. Single biggest influence. So if we want them to start having this long-term vision, we need to start modeling that ourselves. Mm -hmm. So no matter what it is, whether it's eating right, whether it's uh, having a positive mindset, whether it's how you deal with adversity, whether whatever it is, I want you to start acting as if you are being watched every single second of the day. Because guess what? You are. Mm -hmm. You're being watched Whatever by your you kids. don't even realize. It. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think something to piggyback you too there. We're just piggybacking. I like piggybacks. It's good. A, a lot of times we, we say, we, say we, want, we want this and we, mm -hmm. and we, we say we're committed, but mm -hmm. they're still just kind of doing ish. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to do off-season training ish uh -huh. and that and that's not that's not gonna that's not a good recipe for that long-term vision right and 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 that's where it gets tough with parents too because if you put on in all this work for two or three months in the off season and then do nothing mm -hmm. for the next nine months yeah that's yeah. that's not a good recipe not a good recipe for that long-term performance that we're wanting to have Right, that long-term plan. So that's awesome. Hey, we're getting some good comments in here. Uh, Drew, Coach Joey's always yeah. uh, preaching to me. It takes uh, time. It's not going to happen in one night. Amen to that. Mandy, mm -hmm. the I've eaten two healthy meals. Where are, my, are my games? games? I love I that. It. Yeah, but I've got my mind I love right. It. Love it. Hey, we miss hey, you, you too, Mandy. Hey, you preach that to Ryder yeah. when he complains he can't gain some weight. That's right. Yeah, there we go. Mike, they watching and listening, even when they seem to be doing their own thing. Amen to that. They are. They're always watching. They're always listening. They are, they are just constantly, constantly, constantly soaking in and absorbing every single thing uh, that you're, you're putting in there. So you might not think it, parents, but, but they are. Isn't it funny how they start modeling and doing things, and you look at them like, man, that sounded just like me, right? 
because that's where they learned it from. Mm-hmm. Kids and parents have to buy in to the process. Amen to that, Always Casey. Always listening. Always listening. Yeah. Mason, what's, what's up, happening, Mason? Mason? So there we go. That's step number one. You are a great role model. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. You are a rock star. And hey, you're living some good Cherish a Challenge, understanding the process there too, right huh? There it right is. Right here. That brain surgery for crying out loud. You are, you are, you are, a, uh, you are a role model. You're the one living it right now and, and uh, getting up and doing what you got to do. Uh, coming back from brain surgery for crying out loud. That's awesome. So you inspire us. Yes. So number two, number two. If you want to have this long-term fix for the quick fix culture, it's not always about the performance. Not always about the performance. I see so many times, and I've lived so many times, or I've experienced so many times. So many times we see a uh, maybe a, a kid. Okay, let's role play scenario. Okay, hey mom, hey dad, did you see me uh, hit that home run? I felt that that was awesome, and the 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 response from the parent is man i love going out and watching you hit home runs and do well right or we could have let's try this scenario man hey dad did you go out and see me hit that home run maybe the response could be man i love going out and watching you do your thing and watching you play similar but very different right yes. one is so focused on the outcome right it's a quick fix that athlete that person knows all of a sudden man if i do perform well, that's when I'm going to get love and that's when mm-hmm. I'm going to get appreciation. If only when I do things right, right? Instead of, man, I am loved. For five. Yeah, I, I, I'm over for five, but I know I'm loved. I know that um, I'm appreciated. I know that my parents have got my back, right? That's that long term, right? Yeah. The, the, game sure. to game, day to day, we're going to have our ups, we're going to have our downs, but we don't want our happiness. We don't want our joy. We don't want our fulfillment. We don't want... Uh, the support from our, our, you know, mom or dad or brother, sister, or br- whatever it is, to be conditional on just that moment or just mm-hmm. that performance. Hey, Absolutely. You could go over the world and I'm still proud of you, right? I'll try to get better, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> but I'm and, still proud of you. And one thing, and we've talked about this too for, for guys in the cage, mm-hmm. when, when we're going through an adjustment or a major swing change, you know, I, I have to be very – I got, I got to let them know, like, you, you might miss 15 balls in a row, mm-hmm. but that's okay. I want you to feel the adjustment and just mm-hmm. take the swing and not focus on there's the ball, hit it. Right. Because then they're not going to – they're not going to – it's not the same scenario. It's not the right. same mindset. Mm-hmm. Like, I want you to take the swing rather than just worry about hitting the ball good in the cage. Right. Yeah, because you can hit the ball – Great in the cage, but if the swing's wrong, who cares? Again, that's that long-term development. You might have to miss it a a hundred times doing it properly before you ever can hit it really, really well out on the field. It it might take weeks. It might take months. It might take six months for you to make that – a year to make that one adjustment Uh change. Right. But it's got to be consistent, and you got to be disciplined on it. Even when it's tough, because when you're missing balls and when you're popping balls up and yeah. and hitting ground balls, like it sucks. Yeah, it does. But you you got to keep on that. You got to stay on the train tracks. You, you can't you can't yep. veer off in the bushes and and or else you're gonna stay there. Yep. And and the parents make sure that you're supporting them through all that. Right. Yes. We can't get frustrated with them um, just because the performance wasn't there. Right. The the end result. I always like to say you can you can smash every ball in a game and go zero for ten. Yeah. Right, it might just go right at people. You can't control the outcome, but you can control what you're doing, right? And if you're, we want to focus on what we're doing, what your athlete is doing. How are they focusing? How are they changing? What is their effort level like? That's what we need to start focusing on, not just the external result. How are they living? What are we doing? And how are we supporting them in that? So, yeah, you talk great, great analogy. Joey makes me think about my adjustments from junior. Year. Yeah, Drew Yates, talk about adjustments. Yeah, junior. big, big adjustments. And 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 this. And it took a while. Mm-hmm. It, it took almost two years, but senior year. But then what happened? Senior year. Senior year, he finally reaped those benefits of the long-term crushed vision it. and batted 400 yeah, in senior crushed year. Crushed it his senior and year. And now he's playing college baseball. Absolutely. Absolutely. There we go. And that's a perfect example. So there we go. So step number one for the long-term fix to the quick fix culture. And again, these are long-term solutions here. Number one, have a long-term vision, right? And parents, always Act as if you're being watched. 
because you are. Number two, not about just the performance, right? It's not just about the performance. It's about the execution. It's about how we live in, right? Don't just, don't allow your love or your support or your mindset or your whatever to be conditional based on the outcome of the performance, right? And number three, number three, discipline. Oh, I, I just said that one. You did. Man, I discipline. just ruined it. No, you didn't. You didn't ruin it. I ruined it. Uh-huh. Discipline versus guidance. Okay, I'm going to say this. Every kid, as much as they don't want to hear it or say it, admit it, they want discipline. They need discipline. We need those guidelines. We need those, those guardrails, right? It's kind of fun because my dad's sitting right over there, right? And uh, that, he, he would set up guardrails for me, mm -hmm. right? And he would allow me sometimes to jump over that guardrail, right? He, and he would sit there and say, you know what, Ryan? I don't know about that. I don't know <laughs> if that's a good idea or not. I'm not. He would always say, you know, Ryan, life is the decisions you make. There, oh. Did you hear him? He would always say that to me. And it's always resonated with me because I had the decision. Am I going to hop over this guardrail? And once I hopped over it, I was like, well, I better come back. Right. And then you bounce off the guardrail. And then I bounce <laughs> off the guardrail. That's right. But whenever I would hop over, there was a, a moment where my dad could he could come in just like oh like fired up but he never did he never did because he was I, I was very blessed he understood that the quick fix the quick fix would have been to come in yelling and screaming right that's not gonna work we're again we're talking about the long-term mindset and parents we need to have that same long-term mindset if we're wanting this long-term solution if we're wanting long-term discipline from our kids if we're wanting this long-term mindset we can't fall into the short-term outburst. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something right now. And you might argue otherwise. Yelling and screaming doesn't work. Nope. It Never. doesn't work. It doesn't Never. work. You, you will get a short-term, okay, maybe temporary fix. They, they do something wrong. You yell and scream. You send them to their room and, man, I feel better. Short-term. But then what happens over time? Your, your, your parent, your, your kid, all of a sudden, like they start they losing get, respect, right? And, and they, they get, start and resenting they, it. And they get fearful of making more mistakes because they're going to get outburst again. Yep. And that's a terrible plan for long-term development, right? It, yes, it will fix it here in the moment. But again, we're, in, we're trying to fix the quick fix culture. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. We don't want the quick fix. We want the harder route, which is I'm going to start teaching and I'm going to start guiding my son or daughter through this, right? Don't just quick fix it, throw them back on the other side of the guardrail. No, let's teach them how to get back on the other side of the guardrail. And let's take the long-term development and say, let me teach you why. Another quick story on my dad since he's sitting over here. And y'all can steal this if you want. Y'all can steal this. It was the worst punishment I ever had. <laughs> the worst punishment I ever had. And I always say this, but it's brilliant and I'm going to use it with my daughter because it is brilliant. Coaches, you can use it with your athletes. I just talked to one of the coaches that I work with about using this with his athletes and it's brilliant. And my dad's so smart and I'm not saying that just because he's right over there, but it was brilliant. Parents, listen into this one. As a kid, I would do something, whatever it was. I, I, I don't know, liar, I, I, I don't know. Okay, I was a pretty good kid though. I was a pretty good kid. So I, I didn't get so. in too much trouble, but what he would do is he would say, okay, Ryan, he'd sit me down, Ryan, Shouldn't do that. You're obviously in trouble, right? You, you can't go do that. You're obviously in trouble. This is where the guidance came in. He could have yelled or screamed or like, wah, but he didn't do that. He would sit me down. Ryan, what you did was wrong. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. Okay. This is where the punishment came in. He said, Ryan, I've got something in mind. Hey, I've, I've got a punishment in mind. And again, this is me in like elementary school, middle school. I've got a punishment in mind. What I need you to do is go to your room and think about what you did, and I need you to come up with a punishment. Now, if you come back with a punishment that was way easier than what I have in mind, I'm gonna make my punishment harder. But if you come back with a punishment that's harder than mine, we'll go with yours. <laughs> and so I would have to sit there in my room, like, and I would that's be awesome. stressing about like, okay, how, how bad was what I did? right? Whatever it was, whether it was lie, steal, steal, cheat, whatever it was, right? How bad was it? And what should the repercussion of this be? But that's where the brilliance is. I had to sit there and, and think actually about think about what you did and actually think about what I did and how it impacts not just me, but other people. And 
it, that in itself was the punishment. And that's the guidance. That's the wisdom coming in th saying, think about what you're doing, right? There are repercussions to what you do. Instead of just a quick fix, yell, bah, right? Yeah, bah, go do this. Go sit in your room. Go, bah. Like, okay, in one ear, out there. Like, maybe, maybe well, I had yeah. a punishment like that, but I don't remember, don't remember it. Like, I remember having to sit and think. And, and right? in the microwave culture, too, it's so easy to say, go to your room. Mm -hmm. But then you walk in their room 10 minutes later, and they're on the iPad. Right. And they're not even thinking about anything that they just did mm -hmm. or any repercussions that, that yeah. could come. And that's where they – because they know it'll just blow over. Yeah. Mom and dad are just mad. It'll blow over. Yep. They blow up like this so, all the time. So the kids, And it doesn't mean anything. The kids are actually smarter than the parents. It, sometimes. Sometimes, and they start losing respect for the discipline and the guidance, right? And that's not what we want. We want this long-term vision. How many times do we hear – yeah, my kid just doesn't listen to dad. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're going to hand them to you. Right, right. And that, like, we love having a piece of, of being a small piece of the, the puzzle that helps you on your journey. We love helping you become the hero of your story. We love having the opportunity to do that. But we want to help your parents, too, to say, hey, how can you guys regain some of that? How can we yeah. walk along this path with your son I don't or daughter? I want to be like that. Right. Like, I, I want a kid to be able to say, yeah. I, want to, I want a kid to be able to listen to dad if he has Absolutely. advice or guidance. Absolutely, because at the end of the day, mom and dad are going to be the biggest influence. So how can they help you do that? And they're, they're with mom and dad way more way more than they're with us. Mm -hmm. One hour or two hours yeah. or three hours a week with us. Yeah, absolutely. My punishment was yard work, and I hated yard work. Yeah. I love it. There we go. Perfect example. A lot of times it was like a task. It was a chore. Mm -hmm. But, like, did that really curb your, 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 your actions? Right? How much would you really think? Oh, okay, but we're just upset, right? You know, that's what we want. You know, Fresh Prince Will, what's happening, baby? What's happening? Gavin, Gavin Baker, what's happening, Avery? I see you. So, so there we go. Those are our our thoughts right now on on the quick fix. So the long term fix for the quick fix culture, right? I like this topic a lot. It's a good one, and we could probably keep on talking for another yeah. hour on this. We could probably do a whole seminar on this, um, Ooh, which might be kind of cool. That's a good idea. But uh, you know, parents, if you want more of this. Right. We a lot of times we do this for for you parents that are saying, hey, you know, we need more help. We need more resources. I, I need to know how how can I replicate what you guys are doing at Crucible at home? These are a lot of the things that we start thinking about here at Crucible. This is a lot of the bread and butter of what we're focused on here at Crucible that does separate us. Right. That does help us get into your your kids head and heart there a little bit differently. Right. It's this long term vision. It's this long term plan. It's focused on on their not the performance, but how about how about their performing, right? Yeah. How how they are performing, not the end result. Like, what is that effort level like? And you know, it's about oh, you did something wrong. Okay, how can we curb that? How can we start thinking about you know why walking away when I'm talking to you is disrespectful, or why you know failure is okay, right? It, it's about the process, and that's so much of what we talk about with the cherish the challenge mindset. It's it's all that good stuff there. So. Boom. If anybody has any questions, feel free to pop them in. Uh, we're going to hop off here before too long. Ooh, Mason. Mace, advice for the high school baseball. So, like, what about? What about um, advice in what? There's so much like that could go into that. Tell, tell, me, tell me more. What that do you, is kind of a loaded question, but I think one of the biggest things is, like, not, not worrying about what other people are doing surrounding you. Because that's mm -hmm. a trap I fell in, even at the professional level. Yeah. You're at, you're at these – you're at spring training with, with 80 players that have the same talent that you have. Yeah. So it's so easy to say, man, I got to do better than him. I got to do better than him. I got to do better than him. And then you lose track of what you're doing and you're not focused. Yeah, absolutely. That comparison, like the team atmosphere. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that's anywhere. It's not even just high school baseball. It's, it's work environment. It's going to be uh, high school in general, right? There's going to be all kinds of, uh, different personalities and different cultures. You'll never go wrong. You'll never go wrong going into it looking to serve other people. Mm -hmm. If you go into it looking to say, hey, what can I give versus what can I get? Good things are going to happen. Now, no matter what you're doing. Right. No matter what you're doing, whether it's going into work, going into the gym, going onto a team. If you go in looking to serve, to help other people, good things are going to happen. Right. So, as far as like the team atmosphere, there's, there's just like anything, there's going to be kids that have great mindsets. There are going to be kids that are trying to pull you down, right? But like that's, 
that's kind of the way the world is. Yeah. Um, so just stay focused on, I'll put those blinders on, have your long-term vision. And like Joey was just saying, don't start peeking at what anybody else is doing. You focus on doing the best thing you can do every single day, get a little bit better, look to serve somebody, look to help somebody else out, bring somebody else up the mountain with you. Um, and then good things are going to start happening. Um, so ho hopefully that answers, uh, your, your question there. Big shoot us, some, shoot us another message, man. And we'll, we'll help you out. But boom, there we go. If anybody has any final questions, let us know and we will answer those for you. But it's about one o'clock. So we're going to hop on yeah. off here. We don't want to spend, go. uh, take up all of your time. Can't do that. So, uh, yeah, there, that helps. Perfect. That's what I like to hear, Mace. All right, guys. Love you guys. We are going to be back here next Friday, 1230. You know it. So if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have any, like, man, Ryan, what do you think about this? Joey, what do you think about this? Shoot us a DM. Sebastian, what's happening? I see you popping on here, baby. But be sure to shoot us a message. We would love nothing more than to serve you guys, to help you guys out in yeah. whatever. If this hit home with you, let us know because we would love nothing more than to start giving you more and more and more stuff that and hits home. Hits and like, if you think it hit home with somebody else you know, friend or family member, be yeah. sure to tag them in the comments, Instagram, Facebook. Tag them in yep. the comments. Absolutely. There we go. Hey, that's all we got. Love you guys. Have an amazing rest of your Friday. And let's, hey, let's absolutely crush this weekend. Let's go. All right, guys. Boom. Love you guys. See you. Boom. See you, IG. Facebook. Facebook. We're still on it. We'll see you, baby. See you.